Mr. Speaker, the statement this morning is intended to address the issue of road infrastructure in St. Lucia, particularly two specific areas. However, I shall deviate for a moment to address what seemed to be a malicious posting which was placed on social media uh, last evening thereabout in an attempt to instill fear in the minds of St. Lucians, and it has to do with the shock bridge. Mr. Speaker, in January of this year, 2023, uh, through the Road Maintenance and Asset Maintenance Management System, the Ministry was able to detect some obvious um, depressions in the shock bridge. We have been monitoring it ever since and have seen some progression in the depressions and have taken certain action. The shock bridge was constructed some 30 to 40 years ago, maybe, maybe about 4950, in 1972 thereabout, when the Castries Grosley Highway was upgraded. The composite structure, Mr. Speaker, of, comprises five elliptical, flat-bottomed, corrugated metal culverts, often called AMCO culverts. It's reinforced by concrete walls, encased, uh, encasement of culverts, and the voids are filled with granular material and a flexible road pavement, what is called an as asphaltic overlay. The passage of Hurricane Thomas, Mr. Speaker, in 2010 resulted in major damage to the bridge, which necessitated remedial works. The findings revealed the following. At the time, three fully functioning culverts, one condemned culvert, one deformed but functioning culvert. Two, sunken pavement, most likely due to the dissipation of base material through fissures in the crown of the culverts over time, particularly after storm surges. Three, cracking around culvert inlet and outlet due to weathering and erosion. And four, sunken pavement depression in road surface due to large pieces of boulders utilized during remedial works at the time in 210 to bring about the, bring about the motorability of the bridge in quick time. This most likely occurred during the remedial works carried out in 2010 following Hurricane Thomas. Since then, Mr. Speaker, more remedial works have been undertaken on that bridge to sustain it and to prepare at least to have it functional as we prepare for the reconstruction and redevelopment of the castries Grosley Highway. Recent recommendations made spoke to seal cracks around the culvert at inlet and outlet remove damaged pavement, fill and compact with additional stabilized base material and surface. And three, a team was set up to prepare designs and costings for remedial mid-term solution. Mr. Speaker, out of, that, out of the team established, the intention was twofold. One, to undertake remedial works to allow for the continuous functionality of the bridge while we conclude negotiations for the reconstruction of the Julian R. Hunt Highway, often called the castries Grosley Highway, from the Shock Bridge all the way to Grosley. These discussions, Mr. Speaker, obviously caused certain medium immediate, medium, and long-term um, decisions. And it was agreed that we will go with a medium-term decision. In January, the investigation was completed. In March, topographic survey was completed. In June 2023, the designs were commenced. In July, submission of the designs, draft submissions were made. 
and in August, the designs were reviewed and approved. The decision is, Mr. Speaker, that the department will proceed with the remedial works, which will mean to rectify the current uh, situation, which is quite obvious, and to allow for the sustainability of the road as we prepare for the construction of the Julian R. Hunt Highway. This week should have been the commencement of those works, but we have been delayed in negotiations and a determination as to whether we should have shut down the Castries Grizzly Highway from Shock to Marisil and to allow a diversion of traffic from the Shock roundabout through to Union, Granvier, and on to Marisil. However, a decision was made that there's no need to shut it down. We can avoid having to build a bypass, which is the second option, having to build a bypass bridge as a temporary measure, which would have made the exercise, the, the remedial measure, a more costly one. And therefore, we have resorted now to doing this project overnight, uh, working 24 hours a day, and um, uh, rather 24 hours a day, particularly night time, to allow us to complete this project. A contractor has been selected, and the cost of this project is just under 500,000 EC dollars. I must admit that there's no need for any alarm in terms of the possibility of the bridge collapsing at any given time. The bridge is built, not as, it's not a suspended bridge, but rather a bridge built on five AMCO pipes, cylindrical pipes, which are, um, where the, where the um, fault is seen is over one of those pipes. And therefore, there's no need for any serious alarm. We are constantly monitoring it week after week after week. And therefore, we're hoping that once we start the work, we will be able to complete within a very short space of time.